Jupiter's moon Europa is one of the most intriguing celestial bodies in our solar system. It is a frozen world with a subsurface ocean that could contain more than twice as much water as all of Earth's oceans combined. This ocean is believed to be in contact with the moon's rocky mantle, which could provide the necessary nutrients to support life. The possibility of other life forms in our own cosmic backyard has excited scientists and researchers for decades. Recently, a new hypothesis has emerged that suggests that Europa's ocean could have been seeded with life by a comet strike. The idea of panspermia, the transfer of life between planets or moons, has been debated for decades. However, the discovery of microorganisms capable of surviving in space has given the theory new weight. It is believed that comets could have played a crucial role in seeding the universe with life. Comets are icy bodies that formed in the outer solar system and could contain complex organic molecules, the building blocks of life. In 2005, NASA's Deep Impact spacecraft collided with Comet Temple 1, releasing a plume of gas and dust that revealed the presence of organic molecules. This discovery provided evidence that comets could have delivered the necessary ingredients for life to Earth and other planets and moons in our solar system. The idea of comets seeding life on Europa gained traction in 2013, when researchers from the University of Arizona proposed that a comet impact could have created a subsurface ocean on the Moon. According to their hypothesis, a comet would have collided with Europa's icy surface, creating a crater and exposing the Moon's rocky mantle. The impact would have released enough heat to melt the ice, creating a subsurface ocean. The researchers also proposed that the impact could have delivered organic molecules and microorganisms to the Moon's ocean. The microorganisms would have been able to survive in the ocean's hydrothermal vents, which could provide the necessary nutrients to support life. The team conducted laboratory experiments to test their hypothesis and found that the impact of a comet could indeed create a subsurface ocean on Europa. The idea of comets delivering life to Europa has gained further support in recent years with the discovery of organic molecules on the Moon's surface. In 2018, data from the Hubble Space Telescope revealed the presence of water vapor emanating from the surface of Europa. This discovery suggests that the Moon's subsurface ocean could be interacting with its surface, providing further evidence of the possibility of life on Europa. The search for life on Europa has been a primary focus of NASA's planetary science program. The agency's upcoming Europa Clipper mission scheduled to launch in the mid-2020s, will conduct several flybys of the Moon to study its geology, ice shell, subsurface ocean, and potential habitability. The mission aims to determine whether the Moon is capable of supporting life and provide clues about the origin and evolution of life in our solar system. The spacecraft will orbit Jupiter, making dozens of flybys of Europa over a three-year period. During each flyby, the spacecraft will use a suite of scientific instruments to gather data about Europa's surface features, geology, and composition. One of the most important objectives of the Europa Clipper mission is to search for signs of life on Europa. The spacecraft will carry instruments that can detect the presence of organic molecules, which are the building blocks of life. It will also measure the thickness of Europa's ice crust, which will provide important information about the subsurface ocean and its potential habitability. Another important objective of the Europa Clipper mission is to study the Moon's geology. Europa is believed to be one of the most geologically active bodies in the solar system, with a surface that is constantly changing due to tectonic activity and other processes. The mission will help scientists better understand how the Moon's surface features are formed and how they evolve over time. The Europa Clipper mission will also provide valuable information about the radiation environment around Europa. The Moon is constantly bombarded by high-energy particles from Jupiter's intense radiation belts, and this radiation can have a significant impact on the Moon's geology and potential habitability. By studying the radiation environment, scientists will be able to better understand how it affects Europa's surface features and subsurface ocean. As of right now, the Europa Clipper mission is an exciting opportunity for scientists to explore one of the most fascinating moons in our solar system. By studying Europa up close, scientists hope to better understand its potential habitability and the potential for life beyond Earth. 
The mission will also provide important insights into the geology and composition of Europa, as well as its relationship to the rest of the Jupiter system. The Europa Clipper mission is sure to be a groundbreaking mission that will help shape our understanding of the outer solar system for years to come. Potential third planet discovered orbiting Proxima Centauri Although we have not yet discovered extraterrestrial life in our solar system, that does not mean that we are totally without neighbours. In fact, it is the very study of these easily visible nearby neighbours that has allowed us to learn so much about the endless stretch of space that surrounds us. Recently, a surprising discovery was made about the star closest to our sun, Proxima Centauri, which is the smallest member of the Alpha Centauri system of the Centaurus constellation and is located just over four light years away. Findings published in the Astronomy and Astrophysics Journal detailed how a team of astronomers analyzing observations made by the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope in Chile located another planet orbiting the nearby star, which makes it the third planet in this small neighboring system. It seems that the study of this strange new little planet, dubbed Proxima d, could tell researchers much about elements of our solar system that were previously unknown. Firstly, it orbits incredibly close to Proxima Centauri. For reference, Mercury orbits our own Sun at a distance of 10 times that of Proxima d's orbit of Proxima Centauri. One lap around its host star takes just five days, while the other two planets in the system Proxima b and Proxima c take 11 days and a whopping five years, respectively. Additionally, with a mass barely a quarter of Earth's, it is one of the lightest exoplanets that has been discovered so far. Due to the closeness and variability of this neighboring system, scientists are keen to learn its secrets. However, knowledge of the Proxima Centauri system is actually rather slim, as Proxima b was not confirmed as a planet until 2020. In fact, it was the study of this planet using the Eschel spectrograph for rocky exoplanets and stable spectroscopic observations, or ESPRESSO, instrument on the ESO's Very Large Telescope that led to the discovery of Proxima d as mere hints of a corresponding signal surrounding this new planet. After specific ESPRESSO measurements were conducted dedicated exclusively to the potential Proxima d, it was confirmed that the system indeed hosted a third, albeit very small, planet. This achievement is extremely important. Dr. Pedro Figuera, an astronomer with the ESO and a member of the ESPRESSO team. It shows that the radial velocity technique has the potential to unveil a population of light planets, like our own, that are expected to be the most abundant in our galaxy and that can potentially host life as we know it. This result clearly shows what ESPRESSO is capable of and makes me wonder about what it will be able to find in the future. Huge hole 50 Earths wide discovered on the Sun The enormity of the Sun is such that every aspect of it is almost incomprehensibly large, and that even extends to the holes that develop in its surface. Although over the years there have been many incredibly large holes in the corona or the extended atmosphere encircling our flaming star, in 2014 it developed a noteworthy hole that boasted a diameter over 50 times the size of Earth. Although the development of holes in the coronal layer is not unusual, this hole was exceptionally large and quickly captured the attention of researchers and scientists because of its size. In fact, it was so large that satellite images captured of the Sun at the time are dominated by its presence. However, these images were one of the only ways to view the coronal lesion, as the variations of the Sun's atmosphere are only visible when captured in ultraviolet wavelengths. Amazingly, despite its large size, if you were able to look directly at the sun, which you should never do, the hole would be invisible to the naked eye in spite of the fact that it boasts a diameter 50 times that of Earth. This specific coronal lesion was photographed from several different angles by the Solar Dynamics Observatory spacecraft over the course of almost a week and gave scientists the ability to observe its unique appearance and activity. When coronal holes appear, they contribute to generate what is known as space weather, losing plasma and charged particles from the atmosphere of the Sun in the form of ultra-fast solar winds that can affect the atmosphere of Earth. 
coronal holes are more commonly formed in the lower latitudes of the Sun, closer to the poles, and are often generated when the Sun is at a declining point in its 11-year cycle. Although this hole was especially large, it did not have any effects beyond those normally seen with the occurrence of a coronal lesion, and scientists were eager to study it because of its large size and observable, although predictable, effects. So, what did this massive hole mean for those of us stuck here on Earth? Unless you happen to live in an area where northern lights are visible, the answer is not much. Coronal holes tend to cause a much more prominent aurora borealis due to the interactions of the escaping solar geomagnetic energy and Earth's atmosphere. During a large coronal lesion or coronal mass ejection, those witnessing the northern lights might notice that they are much more vibrant and cover a wider area of the sky as a result. Additionally, the high likelihood that the increased solar wind will ignite a geomagnetic storm could affect the power and navigation satellites that orbit Earth, as well as radio communication. These disruptions are often not even noticeable by most people, and should only be as brief as the coronal lesion itself. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.